Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special Father's Day edition of A Good Sports Show. Uh, this week, we're going to be uh, talking about the Rangers, uh, the Raptors winning the NBA championship. Uh, we're going to throw in some Cowboys talk and a little uh, WWE AEW talk. And I'll have some uh, Father's Day uh, memories uh, towards the end of the broadcast. So let's get started. Um, also, you can help grow the show by subscribing um, on Apple Podcast, Podbean, and YouTube. And I really appreciate your feedback and support of the show. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, you can also follow the show on social media. Uh, the show's on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, just It's under at a good sports show. And I'm also on spo- social media as well, uh, rangood03. All right. So we're going to begin the show talking about the uh, Rangers. Uh, The Rangers are sitting uh, four games above uh, 500 right now. They've won six of the last ten games. Uh, They're still below 500 on the road. And playing teams with winning records um, above 500. And the Rangers have a weekend road series uh, with the Cincinnati Reds this week. Uh, this weekend, and then next week, the Cleveland Indians come to uh, Globe Life Park for a four-game series, and then the White Sox uh, visit for a uh, weekend series next weekend. And the Rangers hitting um, is doing pretty good. Uh, Elvis Andrus uh, ranks 15th in Major League Baseball, and he has a three thirteen average uh, with six home runs and 38 RBIs and 13 stolen bases. And Hunter Pence has been doing good, and Chu, and Gallo's on the DL, uh, but he leads the team in home runs with 17 this season. And Pence, like I said, Pence is hitting well. He has a 293 average, and he's got 14 home runs and 46 RBIs. That's really good. They've The Rangers have really needed his production uh, this season. And Chu, uh, Chu's got a two eighty three average, and uh, with eleven home runs and twenty eight RBIs. And I I know on the last episode I was talking about uh Odor, uh with his um, uh awful uh, batting average, and he's raised his batting average. Actually, I wonder if he listened to the show. Uh, his batting average is um, one seventy nine. And I know that's like, ew, that's still bad, but hey, it's trending in the right direction. And uh, he's hit 280 in the last seven games with four RBIs and three stolen bases. So that's really good. Um, and also, he, he has five runs and uh, seven hits during that seven game span. So Odor, um, I mean, he's got to keep the production going or he's going to be sent down to the minors. Um, I think he, uh, hopefully he'll just get on a hot streak here and tear it up and um, and continue to do well. So we're rooting for you, uh, Odor. And the Rangers tw- rank uh, 12th in Major League Baseball with a two fifty six batting average. Uh, they're raising average, uh, batting average just a little bit. Um, so we'll continue to watch the Rangers hitting and see how they do in these uh next series with the Reds and Indians and White Sox. So the Rangers pitching, uh, Mike Miner is still doing well. He ranks ninth in uh, Major League Baseball. He's got a 252 ERA, 5-4 and four record, and impressive 93 strikeouts. Uh, that's really good for Miner uh, so far this season. And the Rangers rank uh, 23rd in uh, Major League Baseball for team pitching. With a 36 and 32 record and a team ERA of 488, which is not too bad. And then Lance Lynn, Lynn leads the team and wins with a seven. And Sampson's been doing well. Um, Adrian Sampson, he's uh, five and one in his last uh, seven games with a 405 ERA. And he's uh, giving up 18 earned runs and throwing 37 strikeouts. So I know Sampson. Um, since he uh, got added into the uh, rotation and everything. I mean, he's been kind of tearing it up for the Rangers. So we'll keep an eye on them and see how they're doing and stuff um, over these next uh, week, week and a half. And now we're going to switch over to NBA talk. And 
The Toronto Raptors won their first NBA championship um, this past Thursday night, and they defeated the Warriors 4-2. I know um, in my previous uh, episode I had the Warriors uh, winning the series 4-2, and I was definitely wrong on that one. Um, And I want to take a deeper look at the box score uh, for Game 6. The Raptors had four players that scored at least 22 points, in that uh, win in Game 6, uh, Lowry and uh, Sykem each scored 26. And Leonard and Van Vliet had 22 points each. I mean, that was huge for the Raptors. And the Raptors are the first team since the 87 Lakers. Now, this is, a, this is an NBA nugget right here. Raptors are the first team since the 87 Lakers to win the NBA Finals with at least six players averaging double figures per game in the series. That's huge uh, for the Raptors. And the Raptors, uh, they became the 15th in NBA Finals history to win three straight road games, uh, which is very impressive to do. Uh, The only other teams to do that were the 53 Lakers, the 90s Pistons, 91 Bulls, 93 Bulls, and 2001 Lakers. I mean, that's, that's, that's a really impressive feat to do that. Uh, Leonard had 28 points. He averaged around 28 points and nine rebounds per game in the finals. And Lowry, um, he averaged uh, 7.2 assists. And I was saying in the last episode that uh, Lowry, you know, needed to step up his game here in the finals, and he sure did that. So I guess looking ahead for the Raptors, um, the big question is if they're going to be able to keep Kawhi Leonard or if he's going to go sign with the Clippers. Um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I could see him sign with the Clippers. Um, He would be playing in front of family and friends at the Staples Center. And, I mean, the Clippers have a good coach and Doc Rivers and a good nucleus of players. And, I mean, that team's on the rise. And, I think if Leonard um, signs with the Clippers, I mean, they're going to be right in the title hunt and compete for a championship. So we kind of have to see how that uh, plays out over the next couple weeks with free agency starting. And then uh, Leonard, you know, if he declines his, uh, he has a uh, $21 million player option for the uh, 2019-2020 season. I mean, that's huge. Um, And if he's, if he signs a deal with the Raptors, I think that's going to be around a five-year, $190 million, $190 million contract, I believe that is. And if he doesn't sign with them um, and he signs with someone else, I think uh, he can get a four-year, around $140 million contract. So he would be giving up a little less money um, to go sign somewhere else. Or he could just stay with the Raptors and try to build a time contender and then also um, add in another um, a star player um, this free agency to help improve the, the Raptors team. And then taking a look at the Warriors, they have four free agents this summer. Uh, Durant, um, of course, he's not going to be able to play, I think, until maybe March of April uh, 2020. So I have to kind of see how that goes. Um, he has a $31 million um, option on his deal. Uh, Clay Thompson, he's going to be an unrestricted free agent. And I believe his dad's already said that uh, Thompson, uh, that Clay Thompson um, is going to come back to the uh, Warriors. So, I mean, kind of scratch him off the list. Sorry, Mavs fans. Um, Boogie Cousins, he's an unrestricted free agent. He did well for the, um, uh, for the Warriors. And... Kayvon Looney, he's going to be an unrestricted free agent. So we'll just kind of see how that all plays out. Um, Thompson coming back would be huge for the uh, Warriors. But it'll be interesting to see where uh, Durant ends up uh, signing um, when free agency starts um, at the end of this month and then going into uh, the July uh, signing period. And a little bit of Mavericks talk. Uh, the Mavs. I know um, I've seen some things out on the internet that uh, there are they interested in uh, Kimba Walker and is Walker interested in the Mavs and uh, yes to both of those. Uh, the Mavs are very interested in adding Walker. Um, I know that uh, there's three teams that are interested in signing him. Uh, one being the Mavs and the Lakers and the Knicks. 
And then, of course, the Hornets, um, team he, he plays for, uh, they can offer the most money, which would be a five-year deal around $220 million, which that's a huge contract. That's max contract. And so kind of see how that goes. I know um, the Mavs will be at the table um, with Walker, you know, trying to get him to play here with um, Doncic and uh, Porzingis. So we'll kind of see how that all plays out. And now we're going to switch over to Dallas Cowboy news. And um, I I saw some news earlier this week that um, Dak Prescott's agent was uh, throwing out a $34 million a year contract uh, for Dak. And I'm not really sure, and I'm not sure, I don't know if anybody's really sure if that's a starting point on the dollar amount for his new deal or if that's um, the the mat, like uh, the bottom line number. So we'll just kind of have to see how that all goes. Um, I mean, the deal could work out to be like a five-year, $138 million contract. So, um, and I know I was, I mentioned that in uh, last week's show that Prescott, um, Prescott, should get like a uh, Jimmy Garoppolo type contract, um, and you can go back to listen to last week's show to kind of get more details on that. But I don't see that as a um, as a bad deal getting the uh, Garoppolo deal. Um, so we we'll kind of see how that goes. I think I feel like um, Dak's gonna get signed before training camp starts um, in July, but you never know with Jerry and how things are going to go, but I, I know they're going to try to work to get this deal done as soon as possible. So that was uh, kind of a wrap on NF, or, or Dallas Cowboy news. So now we're going to switch over to wrestling news. And the WWE and the state that they're in right now. So they have a pay-per-view next Sunday, June 23rd. It's called uh, Stomping Grounds at the, uh, t- at the uh, Tacoma Dome in uh Tacoma, Washington, and there's a report out there that um, they're having a hard time selling uh, tickets to the pay-per-view, and I think there might even be like more than half the seats are available for this pay-per-view. I mean, that's just, that's terrible, and I know this is a first-time pay-per-view with the stomping grounds and everything, but I mean, if you just go look at the card, I mean, it's just... It's a bunch, really, it's a bunch of rematches that um, have taken place over like the past couple of months uh, with the WWE's pay per views. And there's another uh, Baron Corbin versus Seth Rollins match with a special guest referee. And I've read where the special guest referee is not going to be announced until the day of the show. I mean, why, why not go ahead and reveal that and let us know who the special guest referees that's going to help you sell some tickets and I don't know who it is or what the creative team is going to do but um, I, I just hope that you know this is going to be a better match between those two because Rollins Rollins is the best thing going in WWE right now and I know a lot of fans don't really want to see um Baron Corbin as a WWE champion, or I'm sorry, Universal champion, and they're gonna riot if um, if the um, creative team books him to win over Rollins, which I just can't see happening. And then the other match is um, Kofi Kingston versus Dolph Ziggler for the WWE title in a steel cage. Um, I watched that Super Showdown match between uh, Ziggler and Kingston, and uh, of course. Uh, Xavier Woods was on the outside and helping Kingston, or really, I'm sorry, coaching him and being in his supportive in his corner. And uh, Dolph went into the ropes, and uh, well, actually, it started where Dolph was messing with Xavier Woods on the outside of the ring, and um, Dolph got back inside and he went to the ropes on a move, and referee didn't see it, and so Xavier Woods hit. Um, Ziggler and then Kofi ended up winning that match and so Dolph was saying now that he wants Kofi one-on-one in a steel cage and 
that he'll beat him. And I'll just tell you, like as I have said um, previously, Dolph Ziggler is, he's awesome on the mic. Um, he's a great in-ring performer. Um, he's got the charisma. Um, I mean, he'd be a, a great WWE champion again. Um, so we'll see how this match goes. I just don't think they're going to take the belt off uh, Kofi just yet. And then, like I said, the, there's a bunch of rematches on this show. Um, on the Stomping Grounds pay-per-view. Um, and fans are just tired of seeing these same matches on TVs and pay, on TV and the pay-per-views. And the creative team, to me, I just don't feel they're delivering. And it's just, to me, it's just like a, it, it's turning into like a really, really stale product. And if you go look at the weekly ratings for um, SmackDown and Raw, I mean, you can tell like the ratings have been down and um, we just keep, there's so much, there's more talking than wrestling um, in Monday Night Raw. I know one of the previous uh, broadcast. Um, I think they didn't have the first match until like 45 or 50 minutes into the first hour of the show. So, I mean, it's, that's just awful. Um, so we kind of see how it goes with that. But the, um, the other upstart promotion, the AEW promotion with uh, Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks, they sold. They recently sold out their um, all-out pay-per-view in less than 15 minutes, which is really impressive. And that show's going to be in uh, Chicago at the Sears Center on August 31st. And um, AEW's going to be crowning their uh, first uh, world heavyweight champion. And that match is going to be Hangman Page versus uh, Chris Jericho. And that's going to be a great night of, um, of action. And I really enjoyed that, um, uh, the uh, AEW All-In pay-per-view that was in Vegas. There was, I mean, there was some great matches on there and Jim Ross on the call. And, I mean, it was just a great night. And I feel like AEW is just, I mean, they're trending up. And a lot of the fans in WWE, if they keep, um, I mean, if WWE creative team keeps running out this garbage that they're running, I mean, fans, WWE fans are going to be running to AEW. Um, and a lot of them already have. They've already turned to them to uh, check out this new product. And then one of the biggest questions I know a lot of people are asking, you know, will CM Punk, you know, will he make an appearance at the um, all-out pay-per-view in Chicago? That's his hometown. I mean, if Punk shows up, I mean, that's going to be huge. Uh, that's, I mean, there's going to be a, a heck of a buzz uh, for AEW heading into their uh, TV deal with TNT this fall. And, um, I mean, if you could land CM Punk to your uh, roster, oh, man, that, that's, like, huge. So we'll just kind of see that goes. But um, I know WWE's been put on those now. I mean, they're going to have to raise their game, and um, and the creative team's really got to get in there and um, figure out something to make you know make this more appealing to fans and because fans are not going to show up and and they're booing and uh, really quiet during uh, some of the broadcasts and stuff so we'll just kind of see how it shakes out with them um, uh, stomping grounds and um, going forward with, with WWE over the next couple weeks all right so now we're going to switch to some Father's Day talk this is this is going to be fun um, just want to say happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. Um, this is, uh, my first Father's Day. Um, I'm so excited and, um, kind of emotional day for me. Um, you know, I wish my dad was here to, um, share this with me, you know, being my first Father's Day and, um, I miss him dearly and, um, I know he's up in heaven uh, watching over uh, me and uh, my little boy and you know um, it's just it's it's really special um, I've been in I've been a dad for nine months now <laughs> a brand new dad um, going into this going into um, having an infant and everything I had like zero experience of changing diapers and 
um, bottle feeding and rocking to sleep and all that good stuff. And um, it's just, I, I guess, if I was going to give some advice for, you know, new dads and things like that, never if you're nervous or whatever, you know, just day one, you're just going to step into it. And once you see your baby's little face and hold your baby for the first time, like, I mean, it it's just, I, I don't know the words to describe it. And you just, like I said, on day one, you just get in there and um, you start it, you know, you just start not working, but you just start um, doing your part. And you it's a learn on the go process, you know. Every baby's different. Every situation's different. Um, I mean, I I got in there and I started doing the bottles and um, doing that, and I stayed home for two months, and that was like this best experience for me. And um, I mean, that was some great baby bonding uh, with my little boy, and um, it's just it's. It's just, it's so great. And, I mean, it's just only started. I, I just can't imagine, you know, all the great times and memories we're going to have, you know, as he continues, like, to get bigger and grow up and stuff. Um, and then I think, too, like, looking back on uh, my dad and my grandpa and stuff, and I guess I'll start with my grandpa, like... Um, I spent a lot of time with my grandparents growing up and my grandpa like tried to, um, not try, but my grandpa would, um, speak, speak words into me and, and tell me about, um, this is just when I was little, uh, tell me that, you know, I should save my first 10%, you know, and give it to God and, you know, and to find a good job that has a good retirement and, um, and, you know, somewhere I enjoy to work and things like that. And I mean, he just, you know, would speak positive and positive things to me and, you know, be there as a, um, a father figure to me, you know, as, um, my dad worked a lot and stuff and, um, uh, my dad would work like 10 to 12 hour days. And there was a lot of times where, um, I'd only seen like in the evening time, like nine or ten o'clock at night after he got home after a long day, and um, and I would just remember like he'd come home and he's exhausted, and my mom had already made dinner for um, the three of us, and then she left a warm plate for him, and um, I was so excited to like um, sit down with him and have dinner and stuff and. And, you know, when, when I had to um, I sit down with him while he ate dinner and stuff and tell him about school and ask him about math problems and stuff because I hate math and I still hate math. <laughs> um, but that was just sometimes and some of the times I remember. And I also remember uh, growing up, too, that he would uh, play basketball with me when he could. And he coached... Um, uh, two of my teams in fifth and sixth grade, and I played on those teams, and uh, we had a lot of fun with that. But outside of him coaching me on the teams, like uh, we had some of the epic, like games of horse, um, playing each other, and I could like I could not beat him for like the longest time. I kept working hard and hard, like um, on my basketball game, uh, trying to beat him and come up with some trick shots and all that, and I just couldn't get the job done for the longest time, and then finally, um, let's say when I was about, oh gosh, 15, I think maybe I was 15 or 16, um, and we were taking like, what would be considered like half-court shots, um, we had driveways and stuff where we lived, and so I would go out in the alley of the driveway behind the fence, and I would throw up like these prayer looking shots and hope they would go in. And I had one, one that went in and, um, I mean, I couldn't, I, I just didn't think he could make that shot. And sure enough, he goes out there to the alley, 
and dribbles the basketball about three times and then takes two steps into it and bam, hits that. So then I'm trying to be creative to come up with something like, how in the hell am I going to beat him? And so um, so then I went into our backyard and I hit one through the trees and made a basket and he tried to make it and he ended up missing that one. I finally beat him. And of course I had a cardboard championship, a horse championship that... Um, then, <laughs> then I ended up winning and held up and stuff. And, you know, he, he was all fun and we were laughing and everything. And he shook my hand and he's like, well, congratulations, you know, you beat me and stuff. He goes, that was a hell of a game, you know. And so um, that was a lot of fun. And I remember, too, um, about my dad that uh, we had, like, some some of the best memories for me were... Um, he, he would, uh, he worked as a, um, uh, route sales for Frito-Lay and, um, another, uh, chip company. And so he would, um, deliver chips to, um, different stores in the Dallas area. Um, and those were long hours and he had all the chips in his truck and stuff. And, um, I remember there was a couple of summers where I would, um, I would ride along with him. And I think I was probably about 14, maybe 15, somewhere in there. And um, and I would ride with him. And it was so much, it was so much fun. Um, we, we would start out like 6 or 7 in the morning. And, uh, and he, he would, uh, um, we'd get started like 6 or 7. And then we'd go through, um, through Dallas. And we would uh, talk to, like, the managers of the stores. And it was just, you know, it was a good time. And I'd help him bring some chips in. And we'd set them up in the stores and stuff and take the stale chips out. And I brought my little boom box. Um, probably a lot of you don't know what a boom box is. Um, uh, and so i put it up there on the truck, up on the dash and stuff. And we'd listen to country music and you know, sing along and have fun and stuff. And I'm, I know he enjoyed, you know, me uh, riding along with him and stuff. And it was a good experience for me too. Like I could see, you know, uh, how much, you know, these store managers and workers and stuff, you know, they love my dad and, you know, and I got experience like customer service and, you know, interacting with people and, um, just things of that nature and about business and things. And, um, I mean, I really enjoyed that, and so, yeah, it was a lot of, a lot of great times together, and, I mean, I could go on for at least about three or four hour show just talking about all the great memories and stuff, and those are the ones, like, that really, like, stick out in my mind and everything, um, and so, yeah, this Father's Day, I'm, I'm, like, really, really happy, and then, there's a part of me, like, too, you know, that misses my dad and my grandpa, and, um, but I know they're up in heaven, you know, together, and they're watching down over, um, over us, and, um, yeah, and I'm also, too, I, I, I was trying to get this ready for this, uh, show this week, but I couldn't find them, and I think I still have them, uh, maybe at well anyway i'll have to find them there's uh cassette tapes of when my dad and me um would we take a our i'd take my boom box and have the uh, uh blank cassette in there and we would um uh record like fake radio shows and stuff and record and have music playing and then we would uh cut in as the djs and stuff and um, and then we had like these fake commercials and all sorts of stuff. And I hope I can find those. And if I do, I'll, um, I'll see what I can do to upload them and, uh, play them for you on a upcoming uh, broadcast of this show. Um, so yeah, so happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. Um, enjoy the day. Um, you know, enjoy being with family and friends and, do some grilling and hanging out and um, just relax. Um, 
So I want to thank everybody for listening uh, to this week's episode of A Good Sports Show. Um, once again, let me know what you think of this show. Um, you can leave a rating review on Apple Podcast. Um, you can leave a um, leave some feedback on YouTube. And I appreciate um, everybody subscribing to, to the show. And when you subscribe to the show, um, uh, you'll get an alert when there's a new episode. So you won't miss an epi- episode of uh, the broadcast. And yeah, subscribe, download, and share. Um, tattoo, as I say. Tune in and turn it up. And I hope everybody has a great week. Um, this next week, uh, there's not going to be a broadcast. Um, taking a little vacay finally. I haven't had a vacation in probably uh, almost two years. Um, well, it's been a year and a half. Uh, yeah, almost two years. And so we are heading down to Florida. Um, so, and then when I come back uh, the following week, uh, it's been confirmed that me and Ryan Wacky Willis are going to be doing another sports roundtable. Oh, man, get ready. <laughs> so, anyway, um, so I hope everybody has a great week. Uh, God bless, and we will talk to you soon. So long, everybody.